start recording. Okay, so let's just start recording. Then I will try to give you camera if you like to see the face when I'm talking. But if we get disconnected, I have to just uh, close it. Okay, so for now, this is the camera. Okay. Uh, so maximize it. Uh, it is just finding the volume and that would be just really the application or the first concept of what we have learned, what it says. Uh, if you want to get the volume, you do the double integration. So you do have integrand inside and the region of integration is going to be the base of your graph. So if you have a solid, the roof of your solid is going to be what you integrate over and the base of your solid is just what, what your region of integration is coming from, okay? For this, uh, this graph, your base, I'm going to make a roughly graph because that's what you're supposed to do for your test, always your quizzes. So this is going to be uh, the, parabola upside down because you have z1 minus x square minus y square that tells you your, your vertex is right at one and then it's upside down because of these no, two negatives, okay? So what's the region of integration is always the base of this graph because the base of the graph is a circle. How do I know what's the radius of that circle? So basically means you set the z value equals zero. So that gives you one minus x square minus y square. So this is going to be x square plus y square equals one. So that means the radius of that one is one. So I need always two graphs. One is to make the uh, limits of integration or to decide that there is a type one or type two. And one graph is just to uh, see what's the roof, what is the top, what's, what's my integrand, okay? So this is the, the limit of integration, which is one. Y eraser, I didn't select the eraser, okay? Uh, then um, I need to set the limits of integration. I can just do it type one or type two, but since this is just really y as a function of x looks like just square root. And if I want to integrate the square root, I need the trick substitution. So I don't like to do in a type one or type two, okay? Uh, so then it's easier to go by polar. So then I have uh, decided to do by the polar. So then I have to see what's the limits of integration. As I said, 99% of the time, we prefer to study the theta with the problems or examples that we have here, but that's just really the same story as we have had in previous type one, type two for x, y works. When x is fixed, is type one. When y is fixed, is type two. Here, when the theta is fixed, is type one. When r is fixed, is the type two. But we don't call them. We don't worry about what is the name of them. It's just really, uh, started with the theta, if it's fixed, we just go, and then uh, if, if not, we just switch it, okay? So what's the limits of integration for the theta? What is the limits of integration for the theta? So this is going to be theta right over here, is going to be theta equals zero. And then when you have all the way from here to here, so the limits is from zero to two pi. Is that fine? Is the full circle, right? Does it make sense? Move on. And then the next one is what's the limits of integration for uh, R? Huh? So what's the limits of integration for the R? So R is always from the origin, right? So the zero R is the origin and then you, you are extending all the way to the uh, end point of your circle, right? So it's just always uh, starting at the origin and then however it goes, right? So you have started from the origin, which is zero, that's your shaded region, and your shaded region ended by the radius of the one, okay? So that's the radius. And then the other thing is always we have extra factor. This is what we learned last time by geometric region, but we do have that extra factor because of the area of the sector. And then, uh, then you have to put your integrand right over here, okay? So as, as we know, that's just really the roof. That's the top. That's just what you need to integrate over, okay? 
but this is just in terms of the x, I need to make it in terms of the r and theta, and then I'm done. So if I factor the negative out, that gives me one minus r squared, and this is just really what your integrand is, and then you can integrate it, okay? Is there any question about the setting? Is there any question about the setting? If you ask me through the chat, I don't see it, but there's nothing from the chat, am I right? Yeah, you're not it. So I can, yes. yeah, go ahead. Um, would we always do dr d theta or would there be situations when we switch it? Uh, I think you have one or two homeworks that you have to do in this way, but no. I would say, as I said, most 90% of the time is just really DRD theta in our okay. cases. And then also, would there be a case when the theta doesn't start at zero? Yes, we do. You'll see okay. the example here. Yeah. Okay, any other question? Uh, so should I integrate? I think the integration is uh, straightforward because when you start to integrate in terms of the r, so this is going to be distributed is r times one, r squared times r, so that is integration in terms of the r is going to be r squared divided by two, integration in terms of the r is going to be r to the fourth divided by four, and then you plug in zero, everything will be zero, so we don't worry about that, so you plug in the one. So that gives you a constant, that gives you a constant which is one half minus one over four. And then integration from zero to two pi is just one of the things that I request always for students. If you can skip it, as long as there is nothing to integrate in terms of the theta, this process is repeated. So this process that you just take this to be really theta and then plug in zero to two pi, and then the answer is going to be two pi is repeated. So why not from the beginning, I just this is going to be half minus one four, times two pi, okay? So if there is no function in terms of the theta inside to integrate, so then you don't worry about this step. So you can just directly write for me because of zero to two pi two d theta, I have two pi, two pi and that's it, that's enough. Okay? Um, that is same problem with these steps and the answer. So this is just reminding us, is it possible to do in the uh, rectangular coordinate the same problem? Is it possible to do in rectangular coordinate? And that's just really uh, what you will get when you do it in rectangular coordinate, when you go from negative one to the one, so it's right over here. So negative one to the one for the dx. And then if you go to the, uh, uh, this to this for the dy. So this is just going to be from here to here, which is negative piece of your circle to the positive of your circle. So this is uh, when you set the limits of integration uh, for uh, type one, and then your integrand has just really everything one minus x squared minus y squared then you have to integrate this thing, right? So then that would be trick substitution. There's no way to do this type of integration without the trick substitution. So that's why we don't like to go in that way, right? So we prefer to go by polar because most of these things that we can do it by polar, it's at the integration steps. It is just really your uh, integration by part. Oh, sorry, trick substitution, not integration by part, okay? Uh, that is the next example, again, finding the volume. So you're trying to get the volume. There are two surfaces is given to me. There are two surfaces given to me. It's just really between those two. So this kind of problem is very typical for the test and for this chapter, for the homework, you will practice many of those. It seems the region of integration this time is not ready to use, is not ready to use because I have two surfaces. All of the problems that I have tried by now, it was just really one surface. So it was just really the roof, which is one surface and the bottom is just really base or what we call the double integration or region of the integration. 
So it was just really one surface. Even the previous one, uh, it was just really one surface of the, uh, what, what was it, sphere. And then the base was given to be between these two uh, circles, okay? Uh, but here, uh, it's just the first, first time that we see two surfaces. And then uh, what is the difference? The intersection is, or the base is not on my hand. I have to compute it, okay? So the intersection of two curves we have learned in algebra classes, intersection of two lines we have learned in algebra classes now is two surfaces. What is the intersection? So this is a really nice graph that you see over here. So it seems one of the, I'm going to graph it again because that's just what you need to learn and then you need to remind actually from the previous um, chapters. So one of them is the sphere. Uh, I will make the entire sphere, but since the problem asked me to do half of that, I have to later erase it, okay? So this is my entire sphere. And then, uh, it has a radius of three because it's x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals nine. And then this is uh, the, the top one is just the equation of the cone. So I'll make my cone right over here. So this is the equation of the cone. And this is just the equation of the cone. And then what it says, uh, what it says, uh, find the volume, the solid, which is above the cone. So it's just right above the cone, and then it is below the sphere. So it is below the sphere. So seems it's just really this piece. It's really this piece. Okay. And then I'm going to erase the entire uh, entire cone because I don't. I will keep this one. Okay. So this is going to be the top. It's really like ice cream cone, huh? This is just really find the volume of your ice cream inside your ice cream cone, right? So this is the, the volume of the ice cream inside the ice cream cone. So this is just, I will call it Z top, uh, which is the square root of nine minus X square minus Y square because it's a sphere. And this is the, bottom, which is just really the equation of uh, your, your cone, okay? So if I want to know what's the base, uh, let me use, I don't know which color is just better, so I will, I'll use the orange. So if you have the base of this one, I will go right here and just I make the base, okay? This is the region of integration. I should not use this for shading because it covers my, okay, I use this light. Uh, so this is my region of integration, okay? So this is my region of integration. That's the shadow, that's the base. That's where, where your x, y, limits of x, y is coming from, okay? So this is orange and again, and that is just really radius. Okay, then uh, do I know what's the radius of that circle? Do I know what's the radius of? I have actually this uh, three still from the sphere right there to remind you, obviously that radius is not three anymore, okay? Seems is a small really smaller than the three, okay? So somewhere between one, zero to three, okay? So how do I get, where is the shadow of this graph? Where is the base of this graph? It seems to, you, you imagine there is a sun, uh, imagine there is a sun right there, and then this is just really, this yellow one is really the uh, shadow of your graph on the, base, on the ground, okay? On the XY plane, and that's exactly, what the uh, region of integration is or what, where the region of integration is coming from, okay? So I call it shadow, I call it base, and uh, uh, that's just the radius that we need to find out. It's not ready for us. So as I said, it's just really intersection of what are these, these surfaces. So this is one surface, and this is the other surface. 
So what is the intersection of these two surfaces actually giving you the, uh, the uh, what we call uh, uh, radius of that orange uh, um, circle, okay? So that is uh, setting equal non minus x square minus y square equals x square plus y square. So if I want to write it nicer, nine is here, and then x square is the other side, y square is the other side, then you have minus one and plus one is just really two copies of x square and then minus y square and then the other side two copies of y square so if i divide it by two that gives me x square plus y square okay so it seems well what i have over here is the square root of nine divided by two or three square root of two so that's just the radius once I'm done, I'm done, right? So that's just really the only thing I need to be careful about. This radius is a confusion. They, the students usually say it's three. Why not? That's just really three. But if you, if even you look at this three-dimensional uh, graph over here, uh, your three-dimensional graph right over here, it's, it's just really right there, okay? So intersection is right there, is nothing to do with the three, three still is right the, the other side, okay? So what is the radius is from here to here. Uh, again, as I said, is really smaller than, uh, what was it, three rad two, smaller than uh, the entire sphere radius, okay? So is there any question for this step? No? Okay, so again, I have to start with this. Uh, I have to start with this D theta first. I need more room, so I'm going to move it to the back. So this is D theta. So again, uh, this has the start point of, uh, this has the start point of theta equals zero and end point of uh, two pi, because that's a full circle. And then the next one, and uh, full circle start at the origin. That's just different than the always full circle. Doesn't mean zero to two pi, because the center at the origin means is zero to two pi. And for the radius, uh, what do we do for the radius? As I said, we just have to start always from the origin, and then we point it out from the origin. So that gives you the dr. So this is the dr, and the green one is giving you the d theta. Okay. And then, uh, then I have, uh, what is it, from zero, the radius stop at three rad two. Okay. Is there any question for this setting? Do you have anything to add, any comments for me? So this is the first problem. I have two Zs. So if I was just really okay in calculus one, we just say Y top minus Y bottom, so it's really same thing. This is going to be Z top minus Z bottom. So you are getting the area between these two, uh, you are getting the area between these two surfaces. So this is Z top, which is starting from here as a sphere, and this is Z bottom. So you have to get the area between these two, okay? So, and again, don't forget about your, your R as that, uh, uh, what we call Jacobian factor, and then you have a DR, okay? So this, this is just integral, which the Z top, if I just write it over here, or here wherever I have room, so I will have nine minus R square, nine minus r square and then z bottom here is really r square square root right so then it's just really r okay and then I have R and then I have the R D theta. Any question about the setting? 
Next is just the integration. So there were many, many points in this problem. That was a really nice problem. First of all, it has the intersection. So that intersection says the radius is not always the same radius that is given in the problem. There is just sometimes smaller or bigger. And the other point was there was two surfaces. So it was Z top minus Z bottom for your integrand. And then uh, for integration itself, for integration itself right over here, uh, you have to use the U sub situation. Okay, so this is just really one U sub situation. So I'm going to do one by one. Uh, but remember when I'm doing this, this one, I, I just remember I want to skip as much as I can the steps. So this is just practicing for me to skip the, the, the steps, okay? So I have u supposed to be nine uh, minus r squared, and then derivative of the u supposed to be minus two r dr, okay? So integration that I see right over here is the square root of u, and then this r, it has to distribute inside, uh, not here really, I have to make it longer. Uh, this is just really going to distribute here. So that gives you u, and then this is your du, but since this has negative two, you have to divide it by two, okay? So that gives you, for the first piece, it gives you u to the negative, sorry, plus half minus one, divide by plus half minus one, and then I have had that constant, constant of negative half two, okay? So however it is. This is what I just really encourage you to do in your mind and just write the answer here. So this is going to be zero to the three over at two, and that is uh, u, which was nine minus r squared to the power of three half divided by three half, and that's just negative half because of the du has the negative two times and then you plug in the values to be from zero to that thing. And then the last, uh, sorry, I forgot to, because I am integrating, I don't need the notation of integration, okay? So uh, three half is a constant, oh, sorry, reciprocal of three half. So three half reciprocal is two third is a constant, and then negative half is a constant. And then this, if you plug in nine minus whatever is this value was nine over two square. So, uh, so that would be nine over two and then three half minus, if you plug in the zero is nine minus zero to the three half. And then I have integration of two pi d theta, right? And again, I said, I just really encourage you forget about this one and just write directly is two pi because you have nothing to integrate in terms of the theta. So the whole thing is equals the two pi, okay? Why? Because there is no function in terms of the theta. Everything else left is just really a constant. Let me put the bracket. So this is going to be negative one third. This is going to be 18 minus nine divided by two to the three half. This is going to be nine to the three half. What is nine to the three half? Nine to the three half is three square, three half, so it's three cube, so it's 27. And the whole thing multiplied by two pi. Professor, mm -hmm. could you explain why it's two pi? I know it's because it doesn't have an integrand, but is that like the area? It's the length of the interval because it's single integration. So it's just theta because zero to two pi is just end point minus the start point. Okay, so if it starts at zero and then mm -hmm. we have some number, it could be two pi or something else. So this is really, yeah. So what it is is just from a, B to, a to B of dx, which is B minus A. Okay, got it, thank you. Any other question? Any other question?
Okay. So if you were interested to know what's the type one, type two, this is just really what's going on when we have type one, type two for all of these problems that we have practiced. It was just really starting from a constant of theta, ending by constant of the theta. So if your, your uh, what is it, your theta is constant right over here. So that's just what we call type one, uh, right? I don't worry about the name, okay? And then for this, uh, what is it? The other direction, which is finding the R. So you have started from the origin always, whatever you hit first is just the lower limit. Whatever you hit last is just the upper limit. So for this one, that was the lower limit, that was the upper limit, okay? So that's reminding you, it might be just really same story that we have to start it with the constant always. And then the radius is just the inter, inner one. And don't forget about the extra factor of the R, which is always for polar system. And again, if you remember what you have learned in calculus, uh, um, I think that was calculus too. So if you, you, you learn the area in calculus two is just uh, like this, that was the formula in calculus two for the area. And when you are having in polar system, in very last section of our uh, uh, calculus two. So then it's just really same thing that we need to do with the steps. Do I need to remember the formula from calculus two? Not really, because I know what to do. Here in the calculus three, I have learned, if I want to get the area, I have to just have no integrand inside. So it means you have to integrate from one always. So since that one in this, uh, what we call a Jacobian or changing variable has to have dx dy r dr d theta. So means you have the integration of the r in one step. Integration of r in one step is just really whatever it is, r squared divided by two. And then you just have to plug in the upper limit and lower limit and that gives you this half of the, uh, if you remember, it was just the outer, uh, so it was outer uh, square minus inner square. If you have had two, uh, two what is it, uh, uh, polar equations, but if not, that, that it is. So again, I'm not worried about the formulas from the previous course because I now know how to set the limits of integration right over here. So then I will do it in just really uh, double integral. Okay, so that's just really driving the formula like what we have learned before. Uh, so for this type of problems, if it is just really, do I have the graph here? Yeah, it's here. Uh, for this type of uh, problems that's just like this, uh, you don't need to really know the steps of how to graph them. So this type of problem, uh, uh, we have learned it in previous course. It was the several steps to get it, but uh, you need to know how to solve the trig equations corresponding by those. Not really how to graph this type of thing. So what I mean is if I give you such a this problem, I will provide the graph of the polar system for you because that's just a lot of work to, to graph from the beginning, all of this thing. So that is uh, if, there was only polar equation, like these equations, only for these cases, I will provide the formula for you. Still, you need to know what is the, the intersection, you need to know how to find the intersection, okay? So I will provide the graph like this for, the, if there is any test, uh, somehow you need it, okay? So it's somewhere in, in the test, it's provided for you. Right now we are doing all in at home tested uh, test for now, but it doesn't mean it will be the same way for next test. So we don't worry about this type of uh, graphing. But anyway, so what it says, uh, get the area by using the double integral. Again, if you go back to your previous course note, you must able to do this type of problem by your previous information. So this is just really reminding us, we can do this, these problems easier when we have it in double integral. So it's a lot easier to do it in double integration because we just set the limits of integration, okay? So since this has all the symmetrical loop, so means it's just really divided all pieces to half. So that's why this, this is just going to be from negative to positive. So is always that are starting from zero? No, this is one example. No, it's not starting from the zero. This is starting from negative pi over four to the pi over four. 
So this is just really, when we get the area, we just say area of this, we just say area of this graph is going to be double integration of 1dA. So that is going to be set the limits of integration r dr d theta. So the angles are, as you see from here to here, so it's just from negative pi over four to the pi over four, and then the radius is from here to here, which is not a constant. The radius is just not a constant. Your end point of your radius, as you see, is this loop. Your end point of this is going to be this loop, which was the equation of cosine of two theta. So it's from zero to two cosine of theta. And then you can integrate it, okay? Uh, should I integrate? I don't know whether you have any hard integration here because it is r squared divided by two, you plug in zero cosine of, uh, cosine of two theta. Yes. Professor. Yeah. Shouldn't it be, um, oh yeah, there you go, cosine of two theta, you got it. <laughs> thank yeah. you, sorry. Yeah, thank you. So this is uh, cosine of two theta. So then when you plug in, uh, you should have cosine squared. Huh? I'm going to factor the one half. So it's cosine squared. And that is, so to remind you, you when you have even exponent, uh, even exponent, of sine and cosine, uh, we have to go by half angle formula, right? So cosine of, uh, to the second is just one plus cosine of twice divided by two, sine to the second is one minus cosine divided by two. And then if you have odd exponent of sine and cosine, so means if it was sine cube or cosine cube or cosine uh, uh, to the fifth, then you have to use the sine square of x equals one minus cosine x square of x and cosine square of x is one minus sine square. This is just to remind you. For me, it's just, uh, what is it? It's even. Since it's even, I have to go by half angle formula to integrate. So this is going from negative pi over four to pi over four. So this is going to be uh, one plus cosine of is two already, but twice of two is four. Is that fine? Then I know how to integrate. I factor one half out. So then integration of one is just theta. Integration of cosine is sine divided by two. And then, oopsie, that was again mistake, huh? four divided by four. And then this is going to be from negative pi over four to the pi over four, okay? Uh, from negative pi over four, uh, sign up. Okay, so this is the good news. At least this part is zero, huh? Sign of pi is zero. Minus, okay. Again, one more thing that I can skip right over here because uh, this part is zero. Then you plug in pi over four and negative pi over four sine of pi is zero. So I'm not, I, I'm not going to rewrite it, okay? That doesn't make sense to rewrite again something that we already know is zero. So it's uh, upper limit minus lower limit. Upper limit minus lower limit. Okay, upper limit minus lower limit, and that gives you uh, oh, five, half, right? Five, eight. We have the details here, so you can just look at the details. I was going to show the details, that was easier for me. Uh, any any question or comment here? So should I check my chat? Uh, 
No, nothing is there. Is there any question for me? Any question for me? No one? This is maximized, okay. Professor, sorry, yes. I, have, I have a question. So sure. the, the graph um, that we're looking at, is that R equals cosine two theta? That's what the flower is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the four leaves uh, is just what we have for cosine of two theta. Yeah. Check, thank you. Okay. Any other question here? Okay. Professor? Yes, please. Just the domain. Are we normally going to be given the domain or? No. no, it depends on the problem. So if you have had the, uh, what is it? Curve in polar, that is something that you have learned in last section of calculus two, and usually teacher don't get to that point. I will provide this graph, but not the domain. I will give you, this is the graph of what we call cosine of two theta, okay? But not the, the domain. The domain you have to always find by yourself. Okay. Uh, any other question here? This is another nice problem. It has many uh, nice points to get to that volume. First of all, as we see, we have three surfaces. One of them actually is the XY plane. The other two, one of them is paraboloid and the other one is the cylinder. What the volume asks us to do, because it says, do it under the paraboloid. So this is under the paraboloid. And then above the XY plane. So this is XY plane and above. And then inside the cylinder. So that's just the volume we are looking for. This piece of the cylinder is just the volume that you are looking for. Does it make sense? Again, I'm going to uh, have my graph. Uh, okay, oh yeah, there is another nice point about this problem. Uh, this says is not centered at the origin. This says this is not centered at the origin. Okay, so that's why it's really a nice problem. Because if it's not centered at the origin, so then I have to be careful about it's not always zero to two pi, okay? Because it's a full circle, but it's not zero to two pi. One more time, I'm, I will just really make my um, graph here. And that's a good idea in this graph. It has the X to be right over here and the Y to be right over here, the Z to be right over here. So for this cylinder, which we have X squared plus Y squared equals two X, as we know, we have to complete this square, huh? Uh, we have to complete the square, which that gives you uh, uh, plus, what was the completing the square? The half of the midterm square, which is just one here and which is one here, right? So that's what we call completing the square. You're halving the midterm and then square it and then add it both sides. So that gives you x minus one to the second, that gives you y squared and that gives you one, okay? So this means you have to center at the one and zero, and then you have to have a radius of the one. So this is the center which is at one and zero, and then radius of the, the one, okay? So you go, this is what the cylinder is. Okay, so that's just what the cylinder is. And then uh, for the, what is it? The paraboloid is really clear. I'm going into different color. So paraboloid is always like your ball. You go this way. Okay. So I'm going to shade this region. That's just what we are looking for. Okay. And this is my base. So the base is 
the circle which is centered at the x-axis uh, oopsie there was a still eraser okay Is that fine? I agree with my graph. Can you give me my limits of integration now? If I start from the... Okay. Again, don't forget the limits stay exactly the same thing. So that is going to be from zero. That is going to be, I mean, sorry. The zero of your polar system still is right there. Okay. So you have your limits of integration goes like this, right? So it's all the way in tiny pieces of here and then all the way go to the uh, here, but uh, the theta equals zero for all coordinate, uh, the polar coordinate stays always the same thing. So is that true to say I have started from negative pi over two and ending by pi over two? I agree with this. Is it okay? Okay. And then for the radius, for the radius always from the origin, pointing out from the origin 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 pointing out okay so it's not the radius of your uh, circle it's just the radius of whatever we call it in polar so it's not starting from center of your circle it's always from the origin does it make sense <coughs> excuse me Okay, so it's starting from zero, ending the, the equation of this one. I don't know what's the equation, right? So the end point has x squared plus y squared equals two y, but it must be in terms of r. It must be in terms of polar, r and theta, okay? So then you start to just really convert the equation to the polar, and that's a y. Oh, sorry, that was X. So this is in polar, X squared plus Y squared is R squared. X in polar is a cosine, right? R cosine. So then one R cancel out. So then R is equals to cosine of theta. So the equation of that circle in polar is two cosine. Obviously, I couldn't leave it as x, y, right? Because there is no x, y anymore. We have convert everything to the uh, uh, r theta or polar system, right? That was a really nice problem with so many things, right? So the center, this one is not at the origin. You have to uh, convert it to the polar. And then uh, you have to remember the theta equals zero is not always the beginning point. It's just really how it is the starting, but theta of zero is always the positive part of the origin, positive part of the x-axis. R is always from the origin, not from the center of your circle, okay? And then the only integrand or roof that we have on this graph, so for this top piece, the only thing that we have uh, is is just this uh, what is paraboloid right? So that's the only if I call it z top. That's just really the only z that we have because the the because the z bot is just really x y plane and it's zero. If I say z top minus z bottom, the bottom piece is just really zero. So then I don't worry about that thing. So it's just really this uh, right over here. Uh, to write it in polar system that is just really again x squared plus y squared which in polar system is r squared and then integration is easy
Makes sense. I just want to make sure we don't have any hard time for integration. So this is going to be our cube. So the, the integration of our cube is our four divided by four from two cosine theta. And then you have our then so this is just the next thing is the theta. So I factor one, four out. This is going to be two to the power of four. Um, which is 16 and then I have cosine to the power of 4 and then that's what you need to integrate and again this is even so if it is even I have to use the half angle formula and then since it's to the fourth I have to square it since it is square it's just really first term square twice of first to the second and then second term square and that is divide by that is divide by one half square, which is just one fourth. And then this is going to be uh, one more time using that uh, half angle formula, and that would be what was it? One plus one plus cosine of four divided by two. Now I'm ready to integrate. Right, so this is just really algebraic simplification. I mean, not algebraic trick simplification that I have to do, and then I can integrate it. Okay, so now it has 16 divided by 4, which is 4, and then another 4 over here, which was 1 over 4. So 4 by 4 cancel out negative pi over 4, pi over 4, 1 plus 2 cosine of 2 theta plus half one cosine of four theta and then you need to integrate it in terms of the theta i'm not going to do this integration the the main part was here which i've done for you so this is just really easy is there any question um, professor mm -hmm. how'd you get the first integrals bounds the negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you you make to the circle, so when you look at to the circle, uh, your start point of your circle is just right over here, right? And then your end point for the circle is right over here. So if again, you remember in your, uh, what is it, in your trick, in trick, the theta equal 0 is sitting right on the positive part of x-axis, if you go down is negative pi over two. If you go more is just positive pi over two, okay? So you can't do anything just really, so something that one of the students say, why not we make it from zero to pi over two and double it? How do I know the function is symmetric? This is the region of integration. How do I know the function is symmetric from halfway that I make it. That, that halfway that we make it in calculus one or two, it doesn't work here anymore. Because there is something else, which is this roof thing, and I'm not sure whether that's a symmetric or not. So then uh, your circle is starting right over here, and then is ending right over here. So that's just really all entire from zero, sorry, negative pi over two to the pi over two. Does it make sense? Yeah, so that's where the theta is starting. Yes. Circle, and then it mm -hmm. ends. Got it, thank you. No problem, any other question? How do we know that z bottom is equal to zero? Uh, that would be somewhere given in the problem, huh? If it didn't say it's about the xy plane, we didn't know. But the base it says is the starting the above the xy plane, am I right? Yeah, that makes more sense. Thank mm -hmm. you. Welcome. Any other question about the setting? I mean, as we said last time, this is just really main thing. If I know what are the limits and then what is the integrand, the rest is just really calculation, which you can do it easily. Fine. What is the details for this? Oh, 
problem actually is done by the last step. So the last one that we haven't done, the answer is three pi over two. Oh, that's it, okay. This is for this section. Okay, so let's make a seven minutes break again and then continue the lecture. So seven minutes means we will start at 2.07, okay?
Anyone has anything to ask? In your seven minute break, you could hear my husband is teaching the same course at the same time. <laughs> What school does your husband teach at? Cal Poly. Oh, wow. No way. <laughs> yeah. But his class is uh, three days classes, so it's shorter. So we sh he will finish about 10 minutes, but we will continue two hours full. Well, that's good that you guys both are doing, figuring out Zoom at the same time and everything. Yeah, that was just really helpful somehow, but it wasn't hard to figure out. I mean, yeah, it was just really easy. For me, setting these uh, classes, Blackboard, because of, the, because of that quality matter template that I'm using. So the way that I have to set my the course content to be all uh, really match with what I'm doing weekly. That was a lot of time for me because I have said it once at the beginning of semester and then uh, it was just a lot of time to go back and change and move uh, back to the next chapter, next section, or that was just a lot of work. But the Zoom and then the, the saving the videos, that was something tough. So saving the videos from for the first few days, I didn't know. When I just keep all my videos in my PC, then there is no more room to, to save the videos. And then the videos stays there. And then whenever I just want to, okay, so where are my videos? Why I don't get the, the link? So it seems it was just really blocked because I, I wasn't, ha so there was no room to save it in my PC. So that was just a lift for a few, maybe four or five days. So I was waiting why I don't get my link to just send it to the students. And I figured out, no, that's just really, there i have to erase all of my files from the previous classes then i will have room to start the new one but that's just really the other issue that I, otherwise the zooming itself it was just really clear and straightforward for all of us because we use it so usually for something else yeah that's good it's crazy because one of my professors still hasn't figured out how to use zoom like we still haven't had a class for one of my classes oh sorry I know, we just keep getting emails from him saying he's still trying to figure it out. Oh my gosh. Crazy. Mm. Lucky, one of my classes, he hasn't figured out Zoom yet and he hasn't posted anything and he hasn't responded to any of our emails. So mm -hmm. everyone, we're all just like, what's happening? Yeah, I know, you know, because mm, we have used the, this type of e-submission thing from the beginning of and Actually, that was really for our course. 20% of the class to come to the class and lecture it. Otherwise, group works was through the Brightboard. Every just assignment was group. And that was just really luckily for us that it's just really 20% changes and the students always just really clear. Okay, so that's what we were doing. We'll do the same thing. Plus, we just have a lecture to the Zoom. So it was really clear for our class and that was just really luckily for us. We haven't had that much changes. It was everything the same. Uh, but I know if somebody is not using Blackboard for so many reasons or fashion or however they call it, it would be really big disaster to learn even to work with the Blackboard itself. For the teachers, if they are old fashioned, to figure out where the Blackboard is just uh, setting is or how to send something is just really, Zoom is not hard, but the Blackboard, it's, it's hard to find out. But since I was using the quality matter, content from the beginning uh, so I knew what's going on and then I just switched that 20% of my job to the zoom and then here we go we are right on the schedule but we have a good break here yeah? so we will have a good break so we can rest so we can just really figure out which which one goes which way and then we can continue so the break helps us, unless just they just say, okay, I'm not ready to do any of the changes. So I just want to cancel my classes. I hope that thing not, not just not happening for any of you because that's, then your graduation will delay. So your, your other plans, so whatever you have done. So I think uh, you will get something soon from your teachers 
because anyway, anyone must finish the course. But that was a good experience. I will always teach to my, my colleagues, say this is going to be one uh, type of revolution in education of United States. Because if they can do this way of teaching and classes, and then that's saving a lot of money in the campus for them, why not always do it in that way? Uh, I mean, not all of the classes, but at least give the option for some students, why not always just try to have the third option for students to be partially uh, online at the same time. If you wish to sit in the class, you can go and sit in the class. Yeah, that's just really something that I like it. I mean, it's just really different uh, uh, what is side of the problem, which is just looking to the positive side. It's just really saving a lot of money for the campus, for the teachers and for the students. It has many positive sides. If we are all, again, I always say to my students, as long as you are safe and healthy, we are good. So we can continue. So take care of yourself and then we are good. Uh, triple integration, I, I'm going to start the triple integration. That is just really nothing to add what we have learned, okay? It's just, I have done two of them in order. Now I want to just add the third one and do it in order, okay? So I don't think any of us have any problem with the triple integration if we know how to do with the double integration because it's just really adding one more step, one more turn to do the DZ. So uh, conceptually, maybe, uh, yeah, it's a slow. Conceptually, maybe we need to remi remember, it's just really the same process that we have done for all of these integration. So you just have to um, chop it to the pieces then you have to pick a lucky point and then you, you make a Riemann sum and that's just new type of integration, which here is triple integration. So you have had the X's to be between A and B, the Y's to be between C and D, and the Z's to be between R and S. So it seems I have to get the pieces in X direction, which is delta X. I have to get the pieces in Y direction, which is delta Y. And then I have to get the pieces in the uh, Z direction, which is the delta Z. So those pieces that we have had in calculus want to be only uh, X I to the X I minus I, so it means just really intervals. And then he, here in calculus uh, three, we have learned it is just maybe uh, delta X times delta Y, which is because that, that makes it to be delta A or the area or the sub pieces was sub rectangles. So this is going to be now different because you have to have one for the delta x goes in this direction, delta y goes in this direction, and then one goes for the delta z, which goes in this direction, okay? So then that, that would be the delta z. So obviously the sub pieces here is going to be delta volume because that is just going to be delta x times delta y times delta z. So that's conceptually, if this is just going to be integration of uh, f of x dx in single integration is going to be area under the curve. So this is going to be uh, volume under the surface. Uh, so if I just do volume under the surface, so then what happened if I have triple integration of the three variables function and that is just really whatever is the region of integration, I call it E. Oh, sorry, this was box B. I'm going to call the same name, that was B, okay? So conceptually, if you just get the single integration, you, gives you the area under the curve, double integration, area under the, uh, sorry, volume under the surface, which we have done some examples, then uh, when we have triple integration, so we call it hyper volume. It's just something in four dimensions. We don't see it, right? So it's just, this is just getting the uh, name of hypervolume, but it's just really not in uh, three dimensions that we can see. It. But as far as the Riemann sum and make it the pieces and add up the, the, the pieces, which we don't worry about that one because it's just really giving you the concept. It's just really same steps. You have had the pieces in X direction. So that gives you the Delta X, 
you have had in the, the, the Y, so that gives you the delta Y, and then in the Z, that gives you in delta Z, so each subpieces is going to be delta volume. So delta volume, and then uh, the ma making Riemann sum because we have had in three different directions, so you can just make I and J and K for each direction, and pick a lucky point, always we call it a star because it has many options. There was really how many at least options we have, we can have this corner one two three four five six seven eight corners if uh, you want to have the midpoint so that could be midpoint two so then it's just whatever it is pick a lucky point as lucky point as just whatever you want out of these options that you have and this this is going to be what we call a triple integration so the concept of the triple integration is doing this function of three variables and it's giving you what we call hyper volume when the number of pieces is approaching to more and more and you know approaching to the infinity okay so again the order of integration is possible to reorder it it's possible to change the order of integration so that's exactly what we call it in the previous section and it's again Fubini's theorem and it has higher dimension too so what it says if you want to reorder it, it's fine. So if it is dx divided dz, you can make it divide dz dx. So however you want, you can reorder it. So you do whatever is easier. So you can always reorder the triple integration, double integration, and you do whatever is easier. And then concept of the integration is going to be like just really partial derivatives. Now it's partial integration. So if you want to do uh, with respect to the x to be the first one, if with respect to the x is to the first integration or the inner one, so this is just what it says. The first one or the inner one is right here with respect to the x. So if this is with respect to the x, which is your first one that you want to do, so then you consider the y and z to be constant. And then the next thing is going to be for the y. So this is when you do with the y or the next one is just really doing with respect to the y. So then z has to be a constant because z is just the next term. So then when the last one is with respect to the z, so the last one is just really what you do with respect to the z and then you are done. So again, there is all definite integration means that the end you must get the number. So you get the constant at the end, okay? So is it the only order? No, I have another five different orders of integration that I can try, and all of them are possible. All of them gives you the same number. So this is just really uh, what we have had, right? So you can have dx, and then dy, and then dz, but since just really permutation is the permutation, if you take the first one to be x, so then you have two more left to get for the, the dy and dz, and then you have, uh, sorry, for the first one you have three options of x y and z next one because you take order of one of them so it's two left and then one so the permutation is just uh, it's three times two so it's six possible way of or reordering way of doing this one and then all of them are giving you the same number you do whatever is easier okay so one of them is there and then five more are uh, is, is possible to do okay so i'm going to really move on to the example because the process of integration and triple integration is very similar to the double integration. We have one more term. So we have one more step, okay? This is x, y, z square, and then whatever order I want. So I just want to start with the dx, dy, and the z, okay? So limits of the z, is from zero to three. Limits of the y, limits of the y is from negative one to two. And limits of the x uh, is here. So, it's from zero to one, right? Is that fine? So inner one, first turn, and then next turn, and the last turn is the Z. Can I reorder it? Yes, you can. Just don't forget to carry as you are reordering. This was for X, 
So you have to just change the x for the x. This just for limits for the y, and this limits for the z. Okay. So if you reordate, don't forget to change the limits at the same time too. Okay. Ready? I have to keep the dz. I have to keep the dy. And then I will do the dx. So when you are doing the integration in terms of x, y and z is fixed. Huh? So integration y and z squared is fixed. So integration of x is x squared divided by 2. You plug in the value of 0 to 1. This is same. This is same. This is same. So that is just really a constant because I have half minus zero half and that's it. Okay. And then next term, I have to keep outer as it is. And the next term is just for the y. And then again, I used to always to bring the constant just outside, I'm going to bring the half, which is the constant from that green calculation outside. So for the y, I'm doing in the, the derivative in terms of the y, so then z is a constant. So I just write it z squared, but the y integration is y squared divided by two, I go from negative one to the two, and that's it. So that gives me half, and that gives me another half, because I just have the half over here. So I will have to keep the z square because it still is just an extent. So plugging y square is two square and then negative one square is one. I'm going to write this one in, in this color because it was originally in this color. Then you know which one is which one, okay? So whatever it is, is just really number. What was it? Four, four is one. So it's just really uh, one that gives you, uh, let's just integrate, right? So we are ready to integrate. So Z cube, which is Z cube divided by three, plug in from zero to three. That number is two, yeah, it's just one. So that gives you 27 divided by three, and it's the answer. Does it make sense? So again, I'm doing in terms of the, when I'm doing in terms of the X, the other two variables are constant. When I'm doing in terms of the Y, whatever leftover is constant, okay? So just really what you have done in partial derivative, now you are partially integrated, right? Let's try at least one more, uh, I will say order, huh? So different order. Uh, for the setting, not really integrating because integration is going to be the same thing. So for example, let's say uh, I can just write it over here. So you can just say you want to do this time uh, dz and then dy and then dx. Okay, so then the limits of the z is uh, 0 to 3. And then the limits of the y is negative one to two, and the limits of the x is from zero to one. So this is just really the other way, and that gives you really the same number. Or I can just say you have dy, dx, and then dz, and then dx. So limits of x is from zero to one is the last one. The next term is for the zero is zero to three, and the next thing is for negative one to two for the y, and then whatever is your function, okay? So all of these orders are, I mean, there are six of them that's possible, and that gives you the same number. If we select whatever is easier. Is there any question for this one? Any question? Oh, the number? Oh, did I? 
Oh, so you mean you got different number, huh, Jean? Yeah, I think you forgot to multiply by the constant. I think that's why it's off. Where is the, where is the constant? The one half times one half times two squared minus one. Oh, so two squared minus one is, uh, yeah, that's what I left, right? So two squared minus one is three divided by four. And that three by three cancel out. So then I do not have this part of the three but I do have uh, one fourth outside. Okay, so this is 27 divided by four. Thank you. Okay. That's just right over here. Um, for the types, you don't need to worry about the types because again, uh, I don't ask you and not, nobody in the test is asking you to do the, just which type is just doing or which name uh, are you using. So uh, for, for now, I will just really uh, go over the examples and then you will see what, what, what do I mean when you don't need to worry about the types. What I need to know is I will go whatever is easier for me to see, to set, right? So it's easier to see the uh, graph and easier to set the limits of integration, I will choose that one, okay? Because there are really six different ways, right? So how do we decide which one is type one or type two? Whatever is just the order that we have done by now is really type one. What was the order? Your base was giving you the limits of X and Y, and then this uh, Z, what we call it top, and then what we call it Z bottom is giving you the limits of the Z. So whatever we have done by now, which we have set in double integration, the region of integration to be in X, Y, and then Z top minus Z bottom, that was just really uh, type one of triple integration, okay? And this is very typical one because we see the picture always starting from X, Y plane, okay? This is very, very simple one. And then when I just say, I want to move it in the other one because uh, sometimes it's easier. Uh, this is a still type one. Okay, don't worry about this one. It's nothing. Uh, as we uh, get to ex examples, I can explain to you what's going on. So for example, when it says type two, again, you don't have to worry about what do we call which one, okay? So when I say for the type two, why it doesn't work this thing? Okay, so when I go for the type two, it just really seems the projection thing or looking to the graph is easier to look at to the YZ plane and then set the, uh, what is it? X uh, big one, which is X front. And then uh, Y back one is just a small one. Front is the big one. And then uh, back one is the small one because that's how your x-axis is, is changing. So x-axis is changing in this direction. So that is just really whatever is outside is more positive than whatever is inside. So that's just really type two. And uh, if I want to have one more option, obviously is just projection on xz plane. So you can just do the projection, projection on xz plane so this should be your start point. So this should be your XZ plane start point. And then you have to move on the Y direction. So do you hit first this one, which is, I will say left is low limit. And then uh, right is your bigger one. So it's just Y right minus Y, y left, okay? So for now, I'm just going very fast over by this type one, type two, type three, because again, I'm not worried about those. So I, when I do the examples, I prefer to, exp to, to, to explain through the example. That makes make more sense uh, because there are many options for all of them because it still is type one, type two in the double integration that changes everything. So let's just say simply that's my example that I supposed to do. Okay, uh, 
I have to do the triple integration. This tetrahedron is going to be uh, bounded by my coordinate planes and the plane of x plus y plus z equals one. Okay, so this is uh, really possible to do all six ways and I will try to do a few of them at least to uh, see uh, all of them are the same, right? So as long as I have a triangle things, all of them are same. And as long as you can set one way, you are okay. So for this one, I don't think we have any problem. You remember if you want to get the x-intercept, you set the y and z to be zero. And if you want to set the y-intercept, uh, you set x and z to be zero. And then if you want to set the z-intercept, so you set x and y to be zero. And that gives you one over here, one over here, one over here. So this is going to be why this is longer. Okay, so this is going to be where is the solid, right? So where is the solid? The solid is right uh, entire uh, what is corner of your plane, okay? because the coordinate planes are just really making this to be bounded on all sides. And then you have the top uh, plane, uh, if you call it Z top, that's just your top plane, okay? Mm. What I need to decide which order I should start with. Mm. Let's see the typical way when i call it typical way means your base is going to be here right so this is your base okay so means you have to set the limits of integration in two dimensional first which is your xy plane and that was just really like this i make it in the same color okay so that was really like this. And then that's just really previous part of my uh, integration is really double integration. And then I have two uh, types or two options to do, right? Because I can just make it X to be first or I can make it Y to be first and either one is possible. So let's say you just say X is first and then Y is next. So that is not constant, obviously, right? So I have to say it's moving from here to here, right? So that line is x plus y equals one or y is one minus x. So that line or endpoint is uh, one minus x. So you have started from zero and ending by one minus x. So this is dy, okay? So as of here, you have decided to project on x, y. So it's really like previous, part of our job and then setting the limits of uh, integration in either dy dx or dx dy it doesn't matter either one is the same so that was like a previous one the only thing is here you have one more setting right so you have one more in, in part of integration that you have to do which is for dz so if, since you already take care of x and y so the z is left so what i do is really same thing i say i'm writing for z I walk along the z-axis. So I walk along the z-axis and I just see the first thing is just z bottom for again is just the xy plane and the last thing is the z top and that was just the plane equation which is one minus x minus y. That's the plane equation, okay? So that z uh, bottom is just the first one and z top is the, the next one. In the previous chapter was just sitting right here, but now, sorry, previous section. So now it's just really jump on the limits of integration. Okay, so let me erase this one. Uh, so that is uh, the z which is given in the problem. I just wrote it the z over here. 
And then I go one more step and write the Z one more time. So this part is just really like a double integration. I have one more setting for the Z. So this is Z bottom, which was zero, the one minus X minus Y. And that is Z, DZ, DY, and DX. Okay. Does it make sense? Is there any question? Is there any question? And if you don't have any question, let's try another option. So let's just say I want to this time, so I will make it right over here. I want to just say, uh, is it any different to see this graph in other direction? So if you want to call, whatever you want to call it, I just say other direction, but it's just here formally called type two and type three, okay? Uh, so what is the other direction? So how about if I just want to say, that is my projection, that's my start point, that's my base. I'm looking on other direction. So it means I'm looking along the X axis and in this case, the projection or the start point is just really, uh, the start point or the base is just really in what we have ZY plane, right? So it is in ZY plane. So this is when you have projected on ZY plane, YZ plane, and that is going to be, okay, first thing that you need to take care. So again, for the y and z, you can write it dy dz, you can write it dz dy, right? It doesn't matter, so that's up to you. So you can write it dy dz or dz dy is just really up to you because that's a triangle. So this is a triangle, either one is possible. Either one is just really simple, okay? So then if I go from uh, y constant and then z, is the next step. So let me write the Z. So you are going from here to here to get the Z. And this is, uh, this is going to be the, the line of Y plus Z equals one. Since I supposed to write for Z, I solve it for Z. So that gives you one minus Y. And now the last term is the DX. The last thing is because I already take care of my Y and Z. So only X is left. So for the X, I just go by some color, which is more clear. So when we have X, X has to be in direction of X. So it's moving in this direction and then moving in this, moving in this direction, okay? So this is the direction of your X. So this is the direction of your X. So if I say Z, Sorry, if I say X back, which is just really YZ plane, and then if I say X front, which is the bigger X value that I see, it's just really the plane equation like this. Okay, so you are starting from the ZY plane and ending by whatever was the plane, but do you see you have to solve it for X because you are writing for X, you have to solve it for Z for previous one because because uh, you are writing for Z. So here is just writing for X, so you're just solving for X. And that's just really what we call type two. Okay. And again, I just try to do one more. I just try to do one more just to see the projection thing, okay? Uh, for this problem or whatever problem, including triangle, all of these directions are really similar. You can do either one, okay? So whatever left was this one. How about if you want to start with the XZ plane? So this is just what we call type three. If you start to project on XZ plane. So I just bring, bring my XZ over here and then I will say, uh, XZ over here, so this is just going to be uh, 
this is going to be either type one or type two. So if I plug in, uh, remember the equation of the line that I'm writing is just really plugging whatever is missing. So let me just write over here. So if I started from the X or Z, it doesn't matter. So X is from zero to one. Z is moving from, one more time, from here to here. So then, as I said, when I'm writing the equation, so originally the equation in this problem was like this. I, because I'm missing the Y to be zero, so that's why it's X plus Z equals one. That's how I'm writing the, the, the line equation here. But that's just really slope, right? So it's easy to go one and write this slope. Uh, but for me, it's just really setting that missing variable to be zero to get that equation. And then since I was writing for the Z, so this is from zero to one minus X. So this is from zero to one minus X for DZ. And then the last term uh, is for the Y. Y left, Y right. So Y left, and then this part is your y right. And then that, that y, y left was what? Zero. And then y right is just the equation of the plane. So again, do I need to know all of them? No. I will do first one if it works. And I'm happy about that. That's it. I'm done. OK? So that is just showing you all of these are possible. I give you the same number, but since we used to, to see the type one more because the base is just really x by plane in our graphs. So we prefer really type one. Any question? The calculation is here and it gives you one over 24. Calculation is here. Uh, I'm going to stop here. So I will do the next problem. I have one more problem left here, but that's just really something very related to the next section, which is the cylindrical coordinate. I prefer to do the cylindrical coordinate when I have that, that cylindrical coordinate, okay? So this example number three left for the next time. So let's just stop here. Uh, is there any question? Is there any question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot the thing to check earlier. So I'm going to stop recording for now.